Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening teacher. Hi, guys. Good evening. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you for letting me know. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, okay, guys. With just one moment. Just need to set up some things here first in my computer um, before the start class. Okay, first time in class. Um, Maybe just one minute. Oh, great. So, um, look at this, guys. And I share my screen. And um, well, let me tell you that uh, today we're going to start the number three, and we're going to start uh, with the different sections. Uh, the, the, Previous classes have been related to um, section number one, section number two, and also section number three. Uh, we have been learning some vocabulary. We have been learning some structures too. And also we have been checking some information um, related to how to read in English and some techniques that we have been discussing previously. So um, tonight uh, corresponds to um, the in section number three to complete the midterm exam, okay? So um, there you have uh, five different exercises, five different sections, where you're going to find different... Uh, um, Okay, okay, give me just one second. Let me, I, I, I just listen some interference here. I know what he says. Uh, Mr. Eduardo, can you please turn off your microphone? Because we're listening to uh, everything around you. Okay, thank you so much. Sorry. Mr. No, no, don't worry. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, I was telling you that um, in section number three, so we're gonna be uh, completing the midterm exam. And we have five different sections. We have a listening part, we have a, a match the questions with answers and also complete WH questions or WH words into a conversation. We have complete conversation and also a reading, a reading an article. Okay, so these are the things that we have to work um, tonight if we haven't worked yet um, in, in this section number three, okay? So um, just wanna uh, verify, raise your hand if you have already completed the midterm exam. I just wanna know that, okay? Raise your hand. If you complete the midterm exam, please just use this symbol, this icon. Okay, raise your hand, Cindy, okay, Herson, good, uh, Patricia, excellent, Claudia, mm -hmm. Patricia, mm -hmm. Jose Blanco, okay. I guess less than the 50% or, yeah, just five people. We're around 20, I guess. Vale. Menos del 50% completó el ejercicio. Vale. Lo vamos a trabajar ahora. Les voy a pedir que presten mucha atención a todo el contenido de los ejercicios eh, y que vayamos participando en cada uno de ellos. Tomen nota porque les va a servir mucho a ustedes para completarlo este, en su tiempo libre. Y, y, y bueno, y si gustan también irlo completando este, en este momento para que tengan este ejercicio eh, resuelto. Ok, so um, before starting to, uh, with section number one, we're going to find the listening activity. I want to tell you that, um, just, just a reminder, ok, um, that in order to get the diploma to get uh, the, the certification for going to or move on to uh, the next model, you need to complete at least the 80%. In this exercise, correspond to a 30%, 33%, I guess, 
uh, because I don't know, I'm not sure if 33, 34, I'm not sure at all, but these are on 30, okay? So um, this exercise plus the final test um, get to 60%. That's mean that these are the more valuable, okay? So for that reason, we need to complete all the exercises because they are needed. If we do not complete the midterm or if we do not complete the final test, we are not going, even if we have been working raw exercises in, in each section, even though uh, we're not going to get the 80%. And I'm going to tell you in Spanish too. Bueno, un detalle que sí me gustaría resaltar es que eh, en cada una de las, de las secciones nosotros venimos trabajando ejercicios, pero en la sección 3 y en la sección 5 nosotros nos vamos a encontrar el examen de medio curso y el examen final en la sección 5. Mencionarles que el examen de medio curso y el examen final son los que tienen un mayor puntaje, ¿sí? Estamos hablando de que solamente entre el, el examen de medio curso y el examen final estamos rondando el 60% de nuestra nota final. Por lo que no completar una de ellas, eh, estaríamos, digamos, corriendo, bueno, se corre el riesgo de que ustedes no lleguen este, al 80%. De hecho, si no lo completamos, no llegamos al 80% necesario que pide INSAFOR para que ustedes puedan obtener su certificado. Así que el examen final y el examen medio curso, importantísimo. ¿sí? No dejar ningún ejercicio porque son los que más ponderación tienen. Los ejercicios de la sección 1 hasta la 5, esos hacen una sumativa y entre todos esos ejercicios es que forman el otro 30, 33% que, eh, restante eh, para las notas de, del, del curso, ¿ok? Así que a tomarlo en cuenta. So, uh, we're going to start with the listening part. We're going to find some instructions here and it says, listen to the conversation, check the correct answers. This is what we are going to be working on um, tonight. So uh, I'm going to ask you to pay attention here, carefully attention here, because we're going to be verifying, completing in this case, the sentences that are going to appear in this exercise. Okay, so pay carefully attention. Um, let me play the audio right now. Okay, here we have the audio and here we have, we have these three different exercises for this audio. The first one, it says, Mark is going, it's gonna be, remember the pronunciation of going to? So we, we use it last, gonna, okay, instead of going to. Mark is gonna be, okay, so 13, 30, or 33? 13. You mean 30? No. 30 years old? 13. Ah, 13. Yeah, I remember it's 13. Yes. Okay, 13. Good. So, um, number two, you're going to have a party on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Saturday. 
Saturday. Good. Thank you. And number three, you're gonna dance, sing, a, sing songs, or watch television at the party. Sing songs. Sing songs. Okay. Sing songs at the party. They're gonna sing songs. Um, remember, I just need to, to, to create a reminder with the pronunciation of this phrase. Gonna, okay? Instead of going to, it's so more natural if we say gonna, at least uh, in, in speaking, okay? Um, okay, let's move on to the next part. I'm gonna send this just to verify the answers. Yes, you got uh, 20 points there. Let's move on to the next part. It's as much the questions with the answers. Um, in this part, we have um, one question in my poll answers. We have around six, I guess. Yes, there are six possible answers. So we're going to um, choose the best one, the, the, the best that uh, match with the question that we have uh, on the right. Okay, let's start with the first one. Um, are you gonna work this weekend? I mean, are we gonna work this weekend? Yes, I am. No, it's not. No, we're not. Yes, they are. Yes, he is or no, they aren't. No, we are not. No, we're not. We're gonna relax. We're gonna relax. Okay. Let's move on to the second one. It says, are they gonna cook dinner? Yes, I am. No, it's not. No, we're not. Yes, they are. Um, yes, he is or no, they aren't. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Wonderful. Okay. Remember to match uh, the pronouns with the ones that we use in questions. Uh, let's move on to number three. And it says, um, are you going to exercise this, this evening? Are you going to exercise this evening? Yes, I am. No, it's not. No, we're not. Yes, they are. Yes, he is or not, they aren't. Yes, I am. Yes, I'm going. I mean, it's not I'm going. It's I'm going to go swimming. I remember the pronunciation of, of going to instead of, I mean, going instead of going to. Uh, let's move on number four. It's will going to do anything after work. Is Bill yes, gonna? He yes, yes, he is. He's going yes. to visit his parents. Excellent, amazing. Let's move on to number five. The number five says, "Are Pam and Andrew gonna have a picnic this weekend?" Let Let's uh, ask this question again. Are Pam and Andrew gonna have a picnic this weekend? No, they aren't. No, they aren't. No, they aren't. The last one, right? You're gonna have a party. Okay. And the last one. Is it gonna rain tomorrow? Is it gonna rain tomorrow? No, no. it's not. It's not. Gonna... Gonna... Okay, fabulous, okay. Um, let's send the answers. Let's check the, 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 the points. We get, I mean, we got 20 of 20. That's mean we got the 100%. Let's move on to the next activity. And the next activity has to be with WH words. Do you remember WH words? Do you remember WH questions? What are WH words? You remember that? WH words? Why? Why? Where? Where who? Mm -hmm. Why? When? when? What? Okay, when? And some others. Okay, and some others. Let's move on to the, to the activity. And it says, 
Um, so let's the average questions to complete the conversation. This is a little bit the opposite from the previous exercise because in this one, we're gonna be uh, just verifying, which is the appropriate question for the answer that we have on the right, okay? So let's verify. Uh, the, the answer is next summer, we're gonna, we're gonna go to Alaska. What is the possible answer here? According to you, what is a possible, um, I mean, Where? question here, <laughs> the answer, the answer is the ones that we have. Um, okay, tell me. Where are you going to go next summer? Okay, where are you going to go next summer? Perfect. Let's move on to the next one. Alaska, whoa. We're going to take a boat. Um, that, that does all, I guess. Yes. So what must be there? What is the correct answer for this sentence? We have part of the, 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 the sentence at the beginning, and also we have the answers. When are you going to go? What are you gonna go next summer? I, I guess we already used that one. How Early. are you gonna get there? Okay, are you gonna go? Uh, I mean, how are you gonna get there? Oh yes, the, this one it's the ones that match this exercise. Who are you gonna get there? Excellent. Next one. That sound, uh, I mean, that sounds so exciting. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go to, with my family. The possible answer is? Who are you gonna go with? Who are you gonna go with? Okay, perfect. So I, I guess all the uh, answers, oh, we have the last one. <laughs> I, I thought we have just four. Okay, let's uh, verify the last one. It says, great. We're gonna go out on June uh, 21st. Which is the possible, I mean, what is the possible question for this? Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? Excellent. Where are you gonna go next summer? Okay, perfect. Let's send the... This exercise, let's verify. Oh, where are you gonna, where are you gonna go? Ah, I guess I, I just choose the, the incorrect one. Where are you gonna go? My apologies. Okay, there you have, there you have, we, have, we got 20 points of 20. Excellent. Let's complete this activity, guys. Well, um, yes, we have just two more exercises. If you're completing this exercise uh, right now during the video conference, let me know. So that way we can stop a little bit, do it more slowly, and uh, complete all exercises. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, part. And it says th this uh, has to be with uh, conversations. The instruction, it says complete conversations Select the correct word. Then we have just one space for each one. Let's, let's start with this exercise. Number one, I feel get or have. Do you remember the difference between feel and have? We have. have. Recuerden, uh, it's have, okay. Pero recuerden este, la diferencia entre utilizar el, la, el verbo feel y utilizar el verbo have? Ajá. Usted dijo que uno era sentir y el otro era... Ah, se le... Creo que se, se mutió, ¿no? Es... Usted dijo que uno era sentir y el otro era tener. Sí, ok, correcto. Es correcto, ¿sí? El have, nosotros lo utilizamos cuando tenemos algo, ¿sí? Eh, y el feel es algo este, que nosotros pues, simplemente sentimos. Básicamente... Podríamos decir este, que este, un dolor, eh, un, 
Sí, puede, puede ser diferente dolor, dolor de estómago, dolor de cuello, dolor de este, oído, dolor de cabeza, etcétera, etcétera. Son cosas que nosotros tenemos como síntomas. Entonces, en este caso, utilizamos el have. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, the first one, which is have. Let's verify the second um, exercise here, the second sentence. Um, look at this space. And we have the complement that it says this pills. Take. Take, eat or drink. Why not use take, okay? Take these pills. Means almost same than eat. Conversation number two. Um, in the conversation number two, we have to choose between what's, how's, and why's. So, what, what, what? what's the matter? Okay, if we have we have these questions, what's the matter? Possible answers gonna be with how. But let's verify. Um, I don't feel better, well, or sick. I have a stomach. What is the possible Very answer? Well. well. Okay, I feel well. I have a stomach ache. Okay, let's come. Let's move on to conversation number three. Conversation number three. It says, "You feel today?" So possible answers are: What do you feel today? How do you feel today? Or why do you feel today? How do you, How do you feel today? Excellent. And the next one, the 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 answers now so good. I have sore eyes, I feel sore eyes, or I am sore eyes. I have, I have, I have. something that we have on our body. Okay, uh, sore eyes. Um, conversation number four, and this is the last one. Conversation number four, it says, um, I have a backache. Um, don't exercise, rest, or relax. Exercise. Don't exercise. Don't exercise. Okay, perfect. And the, the, the answer is like, and have, and have this medication, or and um, use this medication, or give this medication. Use. Use. Okay, when I'm verifying. And use this medication. Let's send uh, the answers. Yes, we got 20 of 20. Wonderful. Okay, just the last exercise that we're gonna be checking tonight. Okay, in this part, it says read it the article. In the instruction, it says um, read the article, then select the correct harm remedy for each condition. Oh. Vaya, vamos a hacer lo siguiente. Aquí tenemos nosotros este, esta, este artículo y lo que vamos a hacer básicamente es eh, seleccionar vaya, eh, seleccionar el remedio casero correcto para cada uno de los padecimientos que no se nos muestran en este artículo. Así que lo vamos a hacer de la siguiente manera. Aquí tenemos cuatro, ¿sí? Ahora, identifiquemos nosotros de acuerdo a la lectura. Para el número uno, ¿qué debemos usar? Ahí está en la lectura. Revisen. Echen un vistazo. Un vistazo. Ok. Eat hot chicken soup. Muy bien. Let's start with the first one. For a coat, what do we have to do? What are some ham remedies? You can drink warm tea or take some honey, put a coat cloth on your head. Some people eat hot chicken soup, drink a large glass of warm milk or take warm baths. According to the information that you have already read here in this article, which is the correct answer. Which one? Some people eat hot chicken soup. Some people eat some 
Uh, so some people eat hot chicken. So, okay, good. Let's move on to the next one. I'm gonna, choose, I'm gonna click on it. For a coat, what are some home remedies? You can drink warm tea or take some honey. Okay, good. Here we have. Number three, for a headache. For a headache. Put a cold cloth on your head. No, right now it's for a headache. The first one was for cold. I mean, the second one was for cold. Number three. For a headache. You can drink warm tea or take some honey, put a cold cloth on your head. Uh, some people eat hot chicken soup, drink a large glass of warm milk or take a warm bath. Okay, tell me. Put a cold cloth on your head. Put a cold cloth on your head. And the last one, let's move on to the last one for insomnia. Um, you can drink warm tea or take some honey, put a, cloth, uh, put a cold cloth on your head, or some people uh, eat whole chicken soup. Or drink a large glass of warm milk or take a warm bath. According to you, what is the correct answer for this one? The correct... Um, drink a large glass of warm Drink a large. Okay. Drink a large glass of warm milk and take warm bread. Let's end. Um, yeah, got 20 of 20. That's wonderful. Okay. Tenemos 20 de 20. Está perfecto. Bien, denme un segundito. Ya regreso. Vamos a continuar en la sección número 4. Vamos a colocarla por acá. Sección número 4. Quiero que echen un vistazo ahorita. Eh, al primer lesson objective ok, échale un vistazo y me voy a solamente me voy a apartar 30 segunditos nada más y regreso con ustedes porque este, necesito conectar mi computadora ok, así que un, de 30 segunditos, ya regreso
Okay, my apologies. Um, okay, do you, do you take a, a take a look of this lesson of Yete? Do you read it? Yes. Do you read this lesson of Yete? Yes. No. No. Okay. okay. So um, let's read uh, this this lesson of Yeti. Let's see what we're gonna be working uh, in this uh, in this part. The first lesson of Yeti, okay? And it says by the end of this class, you will learn vocabulary for talking about things people hate to do, okay? We're going to learn vocabulary for talking about things people hate to do. Um, let, let's ask to some of you, okay? For instance, um, Alejandra. Alejandra, are you there? Okay, what are some things that you hate to do? What are some things that you don't like to do? Things that you say, ah, oh, I don't want to do that. What will it be? It could be whatever, whatever thing you can imagine. Hey, can you turn on your microphone? No sé, teacher, no lo entiendo. Vale. ¿Cuáles son algunas de las cosas este, que, digamos, a usted no le gusta hacer? ¿O, o, o qué odia hacer? Puede ser cualquier cosa, ¿sí? Como manejar, como este, no sé, algo, algo que se le ocurra. Cosas que a usted no le gustan hacer. Lavar ropa. Lavar ropa. Ah, ok. You don't like to wash, to wash clothes. Ok, good. Uh, Herson, what about you? What are things that you don't like to do? Or things that you hate to do? Uh, for example, uh, wash the bath. Oh, okay, wash the bath. Okay, and let's listen. Cindy, what about you? I have eat soup. <laughs> okay, eat. Oh, <laughs> you mean drink soups? Okay. Uh, okay, Eduardo. Yes, okay, Eduardo, what about you? Playing American football. Oh, playing American football. You hate that? You don't like it? Mm, don't like it. Okay, okay. Um, and Patricia, what about you? What are things that you hate to do? In my case, I don't like I. Okay. Okay, good. Um, Alfredo, what about you? Alfredo, are you there? I guess no. Um, Fatima? I don't like cleaning all my house. Oh, you don't like cleaning? Okay. Uh, Eliasa? What about you? What are things that you don't like to do? Or, or things that you can say like, oh, I hate to do that. We should carry more. Watch, ah, okay, scary movies. Okay, you don't, you, you hate to watch scary movies. Uh, what about Wendy? Wendy, I, I'm asking you because uh, what we're trying to do is to get vocabulary for practicing later. Okay, so pay attention to some of them. Uh, Wendy, tell me, what are things that you hate to do? I guess. When is not here, uh, let's ask to Vicky. Vicky, are you there? Um, and uh, I don't like working on weekends. Oh, yeah, yes, I, I hate that too. <laughs> I am <have laughs> working on weekends too. Okay, uh, and I guess everybody, I guess everybody hates to work on, on weekends. Sandra, um, what about you? Tell me. 
Um, I don't like um, iron. No sé cómo se dice planchar. <laughs> um, I guess it's ironing. I guess we can say that. Iron. ¿Cómo? Okay. Iron, like planchar. Iron. So, yes. We can use it as a verb too. Um, Jose, what about you? And I had the traffic when I drive. Okay. Driving. Yes. Everybody hates the traffic. Yes. Okay. Let's ask to you, Judith. Judith? Uh, not, not here. Claudia. Claudia Flores. You're the last one. Do exercise. Do you exercise? Do you hate do you, do you exercise? I mean, work out. Okay. Okay, okay. I, I guess I have already asked you everybody here. And we have, uh, some of you had shared something that you hate, some, some things that you don't like to, um, you don't like to do. So um, now let's watch this video where we're going to learn vocabulary of the top eight things people have to do, but they hate, okay? So um, let's let's move on and, and let's pay attention to this part and pay attention to how we say or how, how he said um, each, each thing, okay? Vamos a ver un top eight de las cosas que este, las personas tienen que hacer, pero en algunos casos odian hacerlo. Ok, so let, let's pay attention. Y digo en algunos casos porque creo que hay ciertas cosas que, que a algunos les gusta o no les causa molestia. Veamos, y solo estoy compartiendo el audio ahorita. Déjenme un segundito porque no lo había marcado. Listo, ahí está. Ahora sí, prestemos atención. So, pay attention here, please. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn vocabulary for talking about things that people hate to do. Let's get started by listening and practicing. One, stand in line. Two, do laundry. Three, travel to work. Four, go to meetings. Five, exercise. Six, work in the yard. Seven, clean the house. Eight, open the mail. Now, I would like for you to Okay, let, let's just um, take a look at this top eight things people hate to do. Um, standing in line, that's, yeah, I, I consider hateful that, because, you know, sometimes uh, bureaucracy is one of the worst things, <laughs> okay? So, um, have you ever been in a line? And have you ever moved because the line is not advancing? Yes. The yes. The bands. Yes, the bands. <laughs> Mostly the bands. Yes, right. Yes, that's true. And the second one, do laundry. Do laundry is like um washing clothes. You know, la lavanderia. So, so I guess someone here says that don't like to wash clothes. So that's mean that. Hate do laundry. And let's uh, check it out. The number three, travel to work. Okay, travel to work. That's depending where people work. Okay. Eso depende de donde trabajen las personas. Sí. Porque este, en muchos casos, pues hay personas eh, que les queda. Este, la oficina donde trabajan a una cuadra, solo tienen que caminar una cuadra, 
este, o dos cuadras, o a cinco minutos del lugar de la residencia, en carro. Pues, sí, ¿verdad? Este, depende, depende este, la forma también con la que se, se viaje, ¿sí? Si es en autobús, es un poco como más complejo. Este, si es en bicicleta, en carro, a pie, depende, ¿verdad? Este, eh, del, de la percepción de cada persona. So, for instance, in my case, an untold time in, in my case, um, I don't hate travel to work because I have the place that I work, eh, just, it's just five minutes. Okay. Um, some people can hate. For instance, uh, I guess Harrison said, I'm not sure. Harrison said, but parece ser que usted dijo que este, eh, no le gustaba el tráfico. No, no sé si fue usted o me equivoqué. No, fue alguien más, ¿verdad? Uh, me. Ah, José. Okay, José. Probably you uh, hate travel to work because of the traffic. Okay. Muy probablemente una de las cosas que usted este, se podría considerar que, que, que odia o que no le gusta es eh, viajar al trabajo por lo que mencionaba, por el tráfico, ¿ok? So, this is something that, that we can consider. Um, go to meetings, long meetings. Um, I like, like, eh, fast meetings or quick meetings because there are five minutes, everybody eh, take roles or do things that they have to do, but um, later people go out and work, okay? But when we have long meetings, sometimes it's tired to be listening one person or to a group of people to, uh, talking about things and things and things and so it's stressful sometimes. Sometimes, no, not all times, but sometimes it's, it's stressful. Um, exercise. <laughs> yeah. Um, ¿A quién les gusta ir al gym? Aquí. Nadie. ¿Nadie va al gym? No. Bueno. Entonces se confirma. Este, no nos gusta, no nos gusta hacer ejercicio. ¿Sí? Um, I guess people hate to do exercise. People hate to work out. Ok. Or go to the gym. Uh, work in the yard. I guess that's depend. En, en el número 6 depende. ¿verdad? Depende este... Eh, bueno, trabajar en el, en el patio. ¿Sí? Eh, depende de lo que hagamos. Si nos dedicamos, pues, por ejemplo, este, a sembrar algo productivo y nos gusta hacer eso, pues no, no deberíamos de, de odiarlo. Este, creo que vamos enfocado quizás como a, este, si tuviésemos un, un, eh, un patio bastante este, extenso y estuviese descuidado. En algunos casos es como bien tedioso cuando hay un patio descuidado, este, estar tratando de limpiarlo o limpiarlo una vez al año y crece este, el monte y todo eso. Entonces, probablemente eso podría ser este, como un poco um, stressful, I guess. But if you like to, to see it, or if you like to, um, si les gusta como, como sembrar cosas, este, como verduras, cosas que, que se pueden crear como en un huerto, pues depende, ¿verdad? So, uh, in this one, clean the house. So, clean, I guess someone said this, eh, that hate to clean the house. Okay? Mostly on, on, on summer, when we have dust eh, all around the house. Especialmente en, 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 en verano, ¿verdad? Cuando tenemos polvo por toda la casa. So, that's something that, that some people hate to do. And the last one, open meals. And I guess this is depend on the people. <laughs> Depende de quién, de quién sea, ¿sí? Porque muchas veces, bueno, este, eso de, de recibir correo como que ya no, ya no es tan común. O solo pues, recibir documentos este, en PDF, en formato Word, al correo electrónico, ¿sí? Ya de eso de, de, de este, abrir sobres y tener la gran cantidad de sobres, como que 
ya quedó un poco en el pasado, ¿verdad? No sé si alguien este, aquí recibe bastantes migas. ¿Nadie? Ok, bueno, confirmamos entonces de que la mayoría ahora pues estamos un poco más modernizados con, con esto de la tecnología y recibimos correos electrónicos. But uh, I guess even if we're talking about emails, um, can be stressful if we receive a lot of them. Podría ser como tedioso también, ¿verdad? Este, recibir correos electrónicos y este... Bueno, recibir gran cantidad de correos electrónicos y estarlos revisando también creo que se podría considerar un poco tedioso. Menos que estar abriendo sobres, pero tedioso al final. So, uh, let's move on. Let's um, just put in practice this vocabulary in the following uh, exercises. We're going to check this exercise. But before going through, we wanna watch the last lesson of yet We wanna miss that in tonight. And it says, by the end of this class, you will learn how to form positive and negative statements in simple past using regular words. Additionally, you will practice a conversation which illustrate how this topic is used in real life settings. In this part, we're not going to, well, we want to watch the video, but I want to ex uh, explain some things for maybe before watching the video. So in that way, you have the opportunity to ask and you have the opportunity to um, check the, the content and the structures that we want to be working on. Let me stop sharing. Let me um, also uh, share a whiteboard. Just want to you're working on simple past statement. Okay. Podemos ver la pizarra. Sí. 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 Okay. Wanna uh okay. Simple past statement. Okay, simple past statements. Uh, okay, there you have. Um, cuando nosotros estamos hablando del, del pasado simple, las oraciones en pasado simple, hay que recordar que en todas las estructuras en inglés existen tres formas. La primera es la forma afirmativa, la segunda es la forma negativa y la tercera, ¿cuál será? Question. La pregunta de la forma interrogativa, ¿ok? De, o de preguntas, como se le conoce. Vale, estas tres formas, este, nosotros las podemos utilizar en una oración, ya sea afirmativo, negativo, interrogativo. Ahora, eh, nosotros vamos a aprender en esta clase a cómo formar una oración en pasado simple haciendo uso de fórmulas. Bueno, de una fórmula. Fórmulas porque cada una tiene este, su, su propio componente. Pero una fórmula al final que nos permite crear, por ejemplo, una oración afirmativa, una oración negativa y una oración interrogativa. Cuando nosotros construimos eh, oraciones afirmativas haciendo uso del pasado simple, pues el primer elemento que necesitamos, recuerden cuál es el primer elemento que, el, perdón, elemento que necesitamos para construir una, una oración. Se necesita sujeto. El sujeto. Vale. El sujeto es indispensable en todas las oraciones. Cuando nosotros tenemos el sujeto en, en el pasado simple, pues vamos a utilizar eh, un verbo en pasado. Bert in past. Un verbo en pasado. Y vamos a incluir nosotros un complemento. Excelente. Aquí está, sujeto, verbo y complemento. ¿Ok? Estos tres elementos son para las oraciones en pasado simple, haciendo uso de la forma afirmativa. Eh, en, cuando nosotros hablamos de verbo en pasado, voy a hacer esta aclaración y voy a encerrar este por acá. Entre paréntesis. Existen dos, dos tipos de verbo. ¿Sí? 
existen los que nosotros conocemos como verbos regulares y existe otro grupo que se le conoce como verbos irregulares. ¿Saben ustedes cuál es la diferencia entre un verbo regular y un verbo irregular? A ver, ¿quién sabe la respuesta? ¿Quién sabe la respuesta? ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre un verbo regular y un verbo irregular? Cuando estamos hablando de oraciones en pasado simple, por supuesto. ¿Nadie tiene la respuesta? Vale, entonces les explico. Que cambia, cambia el verbo. Muy bien. Correcto. Sí, tiene, tiene este, mucha relación con lo que vamos a discutir ahorita. Existen dos grupos de verbos en inglés. Cuando hablamos de pasado simple, existen dos grupos. Los verbos regulares, los verbos irregulares. ¿Cuáles son los verbos regulares? Los verbos regulares son todos aquellos verbos a los que nosotros simplemente para convertirlos en pasado le vamos a agregar ed al final. Sí, esos son los verbos regulares, los regular verbs. Regular verbs. Es un ed. Ahora, existe otro grupo. Esto se les conoce como los Irregular verbs, o los verbos irregulares. Aquí está. ¿Qué sucede con los eh, verbos irregulares? Vean, hay una característica que a nosotros se nos va a complicar un poco, que a nosotros se nos complica un poco, mejor dicho, que nosotros estamos aprendiendo inglés, eh, para utilizarlos. Vean. Los verbos regulares, la característica es que nosotros le agregamos el ed y se acabó. En los verbos irregulares, no, puede, no existe eh, una regla que me diga cómo yo debo formarlos. No existe una regla este, que me diga a mí este, este verbo al, 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 al convertirlo en pasado simple, debemos escribirlo de esta manera. No. Lastimosamente, cuando hablamos de verbos irregulares, eh, solo nos queda una tarea por hacer. ¿Cuál creen que es? Si no tenemos reglas, si no tenemos estructuras de cómo convertirlos en pasado simple, ¿qué creen que, nos, que, que nosotros debemos hacer? ¿Qué nos queda? Aprenderlos. Aprendérselos. Es correcto. Memorizarlos. ¿Sí? Es una gran lista, sí, pero no queda de otra, ¿sí? Por lo menos practicarlo lo más posible hasta que de forma automática nosotros los podamos identificar que son verbos irregulares, ¿sí? Como no existe regla, no existen estructuras para formarlos, no queda de otra que memorizarlos. Así que este, nos vamos a quedar hasta aquí y ustedes van a llevar una tarea para el día de mañana. Me van a investigar eh, 15 verbos regulares y van a investigar 15 verbos irregulares en pasado, ¿sí? Y pasado participio. En inglés existen dos tipos de pasado. El pasado simple y el pasado participio. Busquen en internet 15 verbos regulares en pasado simple y pasado participio y busquen 15 verbos irregulares. En pasado simple y pasado participio. Esa va a ser su tarea. ¿Tienen preguntas? No. 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 ¿De momento no? Vale, excelente. Sí, sí. Vale, perfecto. Entonces, nos vamos a quedar hasta aquí, porque ya son las, este, las nueve de la noche. Eh, si de casualidad surgiese una pregunta, hágamelo saber. Creo que por ahí escribió... Alguien del staff de inglés corporativo les compartió información, creo que los enlaces, los códigos. Este, si los necesitan, los pueden tomar de ahí, siempre para iniciar a la videoconferencia. De igual forma, si este, eh, existe alguna duda o quieren este, solicitar más información, 
sobre inscripciones y, y eh, diferentes cursos que existen, también pueden comunicarse con el staff de inglés corporativo. Ahí les compartieron el número para que puedan escribir. Y si no, pues la otra opción es que ustedes me lo compartan a mí y yo con todo gusto hago las consultas necesarias para resolver. ¿Ok? Así que eso sería todo. Este, pasen una feliz noche y nos vemos el día de mañana. Cuídense. Bye. 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 See you. See you tomorrow. Bye.